In October, Steven Gerrard became the fourth manager sacked this season when he was removed by Aston Villa. Two wins from their opening 12 games meant a relegation battle loomed. Unacceptable territory in the eyes of the big spending owners, Wes Edens and Nasef Sawiris. Gerrard now faces a wait to restore his credentials as a Premier League manager, which is exactly the opportunity that has been handed to his replacement, Unai Emery. Snapped up from Villarreal for 6 million euros, Emery has returned for another crack at the English game. Three years on from being sacked by Arsenal. His time in North London is still open to debate. Given the daunting task of succeeding Arsene Wenger, the Spaniard won 55% of his 78 games in charge and reached the Europa League final. Yet few were sad to see him go, while his grasp of the English language was relentlessly mocked in what is another low moment for English fan culture. But his time at Villarreal has more than restored his reputation. Emery won the Europa League for the fourth time in his career and drove the Yellow Submarine to a Champions League semi-final. This alone makes him more than qualified for the job at Villa Park, even without giants like Valencia, Sevilla and PSG on his record. Emery declared he was better prepared for the daring challenge at the Birmingham outfit, and 11 games in and his impact is already shining through. Aside from a shock defeat to Stevenage in the FA Cup, Villa have won five of their nine league games, motored up the table and rediscovered their scoring touch. But how exactly has the 51-year-old fixed Villa so far? Let's find out in this episode of Football Daily Explained. Emery's first task was dissecting where things had gone wrong under Steven Gerrard. Bought in off the back of his success with Rangers, Villa looked like a stepping stone towards his ultimate dream of managing Liverpool. And initially, the Scouse midfielder did look up to task, arresting the slump the club had endured under his predecessor, Dean Smith. In the summer, Gerrard was backed with big money additions like Diego Carlos, Leandro Dandonka and Felipe Coutinho, the latter making his move from Barcelona permanent for 20 million euros. The stage was set for a year of progress at Villa Park, but the glittering signings overshadowed the fact Gerrard had lost a crucial piece of his backroom staff. Michael Beale had first worked with Gerrard in the youth setup at Liverpool before joining him at Rangers. Along with Gary McAllister, he then followed him to Villa, where his influence over the squad has become well documented. The former Sao Paulo assistant was a hugely vocal figure in the dressing room. In the words of Emmy Martinez, he knows so much about football, it's just incredible. He does all the training sessions, he takes all the important meetings. With Michael, we felt him and Stevie G are both the managers. Beale's importance then was put to the test when he left for the head role at QPR, and his absence quickly took a toll on Aston Villa, who spluttered through the opening months of the season, while QPR found themselves gunning for promotion in the championship. Wolves came calling for the Englishman but to no avail, before Rangers tried their luck, and Beale found he couldn't say no to his former employer. This time, it's QPR who have suffered without him in the dugout. Back at Villa, Gerrard's tactics without Beal were exposed. He had always preferred narrow direct football and doubled down on this playbook by moving on Anwar El Ghazi, Mahmoud Trezeguet and Bertrand Traore in the summer, all natural wingers. It left the side desperately short on width beyond their fullbacks, while the midfield and attackers often found themselves too compressed and in each other's way in a slender 4-3-3 formation. Just take a look at Buendia and Coutinho's heat maps this term. The South American pair were meant to be Gerard's creative forces, yet neither have registered a single assist. In fact, under the former LA Galaxy star this term, only four players had even created a goal for a teammate. A 1-1 draw away to lowly Nottingham Forest summarised their issues. Villa may have dominated possession, but devoid of ideas, they ended up putting 16 crosses into the box, yet only one found its desired target. All in all, at the time of his dismissal, they had netted just 7 in 11 league games, worsened only by Wolves. Admittedly, his plans were not helped by big injuries to new signings Diego Carlos and Bubakar Kamara, but the growing feeling at Villa Park was that the 42-year-old was failing the attacking talent at his disposal. He ended his tenure with a worse goal-to-games ratio than Dean Smith, and only a marginally improved win rate in the Premier League. Villa desperately needed a manager with a strong tactical identity and the man management skills to reinvigorate the squad. So step forward, Unai Emre. If the Basque native wanted to make a statement, recording a 3-1 victory over Manchester United in his first game was some way to do it. Storming straight into the history books, it was their first win at home against the Red Devils since 1995. Eight league matches later, and only Arsenal, United and Brentford have picked up more points than Villa since his arrival, even with two recent defeats to Leicester and Manchester City. The club have been propelled from 17th to 11th in the table, meaning Emery's remarkable record of never finishing lower than 9th in 13 full top-flight campaigns could yet continue. 
Much to the delight of those at Villa Park, the most obvious improvement has come up front. They've scored 15 in 9 league games, with those goals spread between 7 different players, including the now departed Danny Ings, plus doubles for Emi Buendia and Leon Bailey. However, it's Ollie Watkins who has really stepped up, netting 4 and assisting 2 under Emery. The Englishman has been a permanent fixture at the head of the new 4-4-2 formation, with his forward partner circulated between the remaining attacking options. The new formation has added greater width to the side, while the return of Bubakar Kamara in central midfield has given Douglas Luiz greater confidence to push forward, resulting in a goal and four more assists for the Brazilian. Villa have become much more measured in their approach thanks to their new structure. The analyst has revealed how the chaotic nature of Gerrard's fast and direct football is slowly being phased out. Villa are now attempting 450 52 passes per game compared to 414 previously. And although the creative output hasn't actually improved dramatically, with the team still scoring at only a marginally higher rate than in Gerrard's total reign, they suddenly look far more composed in front of goal. Previously, they were only converting 37% of their big chances created, 20 out of 54 in Gerrard's 38 league game spell in the top flight. For context, this was the fourth lowest percentage among ever present teams in the division during that time. But now, that conversion rate has jumped to 61.5% which is a significant improvement. Watkins recently gave an insight into the kind of structural changes Emery has implemented to his game. He highlighted how before he would drop deep to involve himself as much as possible. Whereas under the new coach, I have definitely learned to stay in my position and believe the opportunities will come and be ready to take those opportunities. The stats reflect these changes. His touches in the box have jumped from 4.8 to 6.3 per 90 and while his shots have only marginally increased, he has become far more clinical. Still, Emery has expressed he wants more from his attackers, including the 17 million euro addition of Jean Duran. But the forwards aren't the only part of the team taking on new instructions. The defence went on a strong run under Emery during his first seven league games, keeping two clean sheets. They may have shipped seven goals and defeats against Leicester and Manchester City, but heavy losses were rare for Aston Villa even in the era of Gerrard, when they averaged 1.3 goals against per game. Emery knows full well how to keep the goal count down, having left Villarreal with the second best defence in La Liga, so don't expect to see Villa on the wrong end of too many thrashings anytime soon. Tyrone Mings has already indicated how much they're learning under their new manager. He described their winter training camp in Dubai as high-level coaching, adding, There is a lot of information to take in, but a lot of information I've never been exposed to before. It was strong praise which some interpreted as a dig at Gerrard, given the former England captain unceremoniously stripped him of the club captaincy. But Emery's notoriously meticulous methods are clearly paying off. His obsession with detail has not always been appreciated. The Arsenal Invincible Laurent suggested the Spaniard's overuse of video analysis contributed to his downfall at the Gunners, while the big personalities of the PSG dressing room proved too tough for him to tame. But at a club of Aston Villa's size, no one is above listening to what he has to say. He has even spoken of how Coutinho has trained with a humility difficult to assume for a player of his level, showing how even the former Barcelona star is prepared to put in the hard yards to get his career back on track. And a manager like like Emery, who enjoys open dialogue and private meetings with his players to foster closer bonds, could be the key to reviving the Brazilian. My dream is to win a trophy of Aston Villa, Emery announced at his opening press conference. My second dream, my objective, will be to play in Europe. He stressed it won't happen overnight, but don't bet against the Spaniards delivering on those ambitions. After all, there are a few on the touchline who know how to do it better. So that was our FD explained on how Unai Emery is slowly transforming Aston Villa. But Villa fans, we want to hear from you. How happy are you with the Spaniards? If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and subscribe to Football Daily if you haven't done so already. Let us know what other kind of topics you want us to cover and we'll see you next time. Bye bye.